Welcome to Blueprint IoT. Did you ever wonder how your headphones are working or actually how those parking distance sensors on your car are working? Well, both of it has something to do with the piezoelectric effect and that's what we're going to explore today. Well, the piezoelectric effect is a certain behavior of certain materials once they are exposed to voltages or pressure from the outside. A simplified version of a piezoelectric component is looking something like this. So in the middle you would have the piezoelectric material and this will be sandwiched in two metal plates basically where you could connect some wires or some electronics and you could hook it up to a voltmeter. Obviously this voltmeter could be anything from an actual voltmeter up to some electronics that's basically analyzing and interpreting the signal. As soon as the piezoelectric element gets exposed to pressure from the outside you would see a voltage signal appearing on your voltmeter. And that's basically the whole magic of the piezoelectric effect. But obviously there's some more detail to it. First of all, this piezoelectric material could be a lot of different things. Most likely in a technical application it would be some sort of crystal. There are actually many different kind of crystals that could be used. It's also a special type of salt that could be used. So this all depends a bit on your application and obviously on a cost versus effectiveness evaluation. Beside crystals you could also use certain ceramics. Also certain ceramics are used in industrial applications or in consumer electronics, stuff like this. But there's another one that's used in industrial applications, which is actually some sort of plastics. Obviously very specific plastics, not like any plastic material can be used for it. But to be perfectly honest, a lot of different materials are actually piezoelectric. And basically there are more and more materials added over time with the science and the measurements are getting better. But obviously there's always a question between what has theoretically a piezoelectric effect and what has a kind of a usable piezoelectric effect for some sort of application. To underline this variety of different type of materials, you can also see the piezoelectric effect in bones and even in tissue and human skin it was discovered in the meantime. But the piezoelectric effect in bones was actually discovered early on. But to keep it simple, it's mainly crystals, ceramics and some sort of plastics. While we are applying the external force on the vertical axis and also the voltage is being created on the vertical axis, there's also a version where you can apply the force on the vertical axis but the voltage is actually created on the horizontal axle or even on a diagonal axle. This all depends on the certain crystal, ceramics or whatever material you're using and how you actually orientated within the element. I won't step any deeper into the material science here because it's actually getting more into chemics and not into electrical engineering but to keep it simple it's you could maybe think about it as like electrons inside of this crystal structure basically rearranging based on the pressure and thereby causing a misalignment or a misdistribution between the electrons and the positive charges within the crystal structure and therefore you could measure a certain voltage but it's not useful as an as a power source of any sort it can create the voltage but as soon as you would apply a certain load it would collapse immediately so it's not really useful to create electricity in the long run but useful to create signals so moving on that's what most people refer to as the piezoelectric effect and it's mostly used in sensors but obviously coming back to the speaker you have an opposite use case by replacing the voltmeter with an actual power source. Especially if you apply, for example, a sine wave or any other sort of wave, you could cause the piezoelectric material to contract or, depending on the polarity, to expand. And thereby you could basically translate an electric signal into a physical, into a mechanical signal. So the electrical signal is being translated into a mechanical signal through the piezoelectric material, which is then transmitting this signal into the air, which would be then referred to as a sound. Looking at the applications, we need to differentiate in two domains, sensors and actuators. Some examples for sensors that are actually using the piezoelectric effect would be a pressure sensor, or a switch, which is not precisely a sensor, could be also seen as an actor, but basically it detects if a button is pushed or not. And if you want to know why you need a piezoelectric element there, there are actually switches that are wirelessly communicating with the smart home system, but also not being wired to power. So basically switches you can just stick with some 
double-sided tape to your wall and then basically by pushing the button by pushing the switch you are creating the electricity needed to send the signal to your smart home gateway whatever so it's basically working as a sensor that's sensing the push and a power source to actually send a signal at the same time and again those are very much minimal low power applications not actually consuming a huge amount of power that a PSO electric element couldn't provide. Next up would be an acceleration sensor which is basically working with a little mass that has some momentum while accelerating and then pushing against a PSO electric element that's then creating the signal that you could interpret with some electronics or microcontroller. A little bit of a more obvious one is a scale or a balance which could use a PSU electric element if it's a very precise one. Otherwise you would use other techniques using little measurement stripes that are changing their resistance whether they bend or compressed but for very precise scales you would use PSU electric elements and last but not least the speaker or the ultrasonic sensor so actually it's a combination of an actuator and a sensor so you would have a piezoelectric actuator to create the signal the ultrasonic signal and then you would use a piezoelectric element to actually sense the echo and create the according signal and measurement this could be two separate piezoelectric elements or the very same one that's just being rewired very quickly before the sound is actually coming back so moving on to the real actuators we would have a very specific application here as an actuator in an electron microscope. So basically to move the microscope or the measurement head of the microscope by tiny bits, very controlled, you would have a piezoelectric element or actually a bunch of piezoelectric elements to actually be able to have all the axes, like the X, Y, Z axis as a bunch of piezoelectric elements basically bolted together. A bit more common application would be headphones. So if you have in-ear headphones or only ear headphones, could be that you have some PSU electric speakers in there. Maybe also only the speakers for the high frequencies. Normally they're more commonly used in the high frequency ranges and not in the bass. But also this depends a little bit on the price point of your headset or speakers. Next up would be an injector in a car, especially in a diesel engine. Since the early 2000s in newer generation diesel engines, the injector is actually using a piezoelectric element or a bunch of piezoelectric elements stacked up together to enable a big enough movement and again it's about precision. For the next one I'm not really sure if you can call it an actuator but basically in your lighter you have sometimes a piezoelectric element creating the spark that's then igniting the flame so it's kind of an actuator basically actuating a little lightning and the very last example would be a printer those little ink droplets basically need to be vaporized and in some cases they're using a piezo electric element to do so. If you have any other applications for piezo electric elements in your mind please make sure to drop it in the comments. I would be super curious about other applications that may be not so obvious where piezo electric elements are used or could be used. Otherwise that's a wrap for the piezo electric element. I hope you got a little bit of a better understanding what it is and what it's used for. If you're interested in more of a deep dive into the topic let me know in the comments too. Otherwise, thanks for watching and see you next time.